So good morning, or good afternoon, I should say. It's not morning anymore, is it? I've been up bright and early this morning. How are we all? Are we okay? Let me just check we're going live on Facebook. Hopefully we are. So I can see anybody on there before we get going. Here we go, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So today's lesson is profiteroles. I love profiteroles. I've been up early this morning. I've made some already because they're going to take about 25 minutes in the oven. So I thought I'd prepare some already. Let me just see if I can get Facebook comments on so I can see uh, people as they come on. If you just say hi on Facebook. That would be fantastic. Can we just turn you down? And then we're ready to roll. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, so profiteroles. I'm just going to hold up the recipe as I always do so you can see it there on the screen if you want to take a screenshot. It is on my um, Facebook page already. <laughs> I can see Anthony holding his recipe up. I'll tell you what, you're going to get an A star. You are, Anthony. <laughs> um, he's always there in front of the class, aren't you? Nice to see you. Uh, Rachel next door, my neighbour, and Alex and Danielle joining us. Hi, everybody, and all students. Fantastic. Nice to see you all on this afternoon. So, profiteroles is one of my favourites. And do you know what? I was only thinking last night. I reckon in my time, I've made millions and millions of profiteroles over the years, the wedding functions. Do you think how many? Well, I make it's phenomenal. So, I can do these with my eyes closed. I've given you a recipe sheet as well. Now remember, these are from college, so the oven temperature will differ slightly, which I'll go through later, because oven um, temperatures at college, they're industrial, so they're slightly hotter than what we have at home. So first of all, I'm going to start off with water and butter. So 175 ml of water I've got on the stove here. I'm going to turn it up slightly now. 75 grams of butter and two grams of sugar. And I'm just going to bring that to the boil. Now, lots of people struggle with the fish rolls or shoe pastry, and I think there's three key points. And if you get those right, it's easy. If you get one of them wrong, then it's disastrous. So the first point is, bring that to the boil, but don't overboil it. So what I mean by that is, don't let it steam away, because what you're doing, you're altering the recipe. It looks a bit dark in there. Can you see me okay today? We're all right, yeah. It looks a bit dark my kitchen. Put the other light on, hold on. Then if it might make a difference. See what that's like. I think that's any brighter or not. Is that better? Yeah, good, fantastic. Okay, so don't let that boil away. And literally bring that to the boil, and then we're gonna add the flour. Okay, and I'm gonna make a roux. So some of you have made a roux before. It's like making a white sauce. Hi, Michelle Roscoe, how are we today? All right, there's a few coming on. Karen, Francesco, uh, Dina, Cho, brilliant, lovely to see you all on today. The weather's not as good as it today, so I bet you're all sort of not in your gardens and uh, wanting to do something. So, flour. Now, shoe pastry, I know some of you struggle getting strong flour. This doesn't matter what you do. Lots of books say for shoe pastry you need strong flour. You don't. I've done them with both. And I've, I've even done a taste test, and it doesn't matter. So whatever you've got in the cupboard, flour wise, use. So I've literally just brought that to the boil. Do you see how I've took this off because I don't want it to evaporate? Because that's one of the key things that people do wrong. So I'm just going to add the, the flour into there now. Always sieve flour. Okay, put that in. And then we're going to bring it together back onto the stove. And we're going to cook it out like a roux. So a roux is a base of a white sauce. So like a bechamel or something like that, so it's very similar. Now at first, it's gonna look a complete lumpy mess. Do not panic, just keep stirring, it's okay. I'm a bit further away from the camera from you today, working over here, but I'll keep popping over to show you. And if there's any questions as we're going, please chat in the chat box. Um, I can see Facebook chat box, I can't see my Zoom because I'm streaming on two platforms today. And we're also recording it as well. So I'm just beating that together so it's nice and smooth. I'll come over and show you here. It's not quite ready yet. Let me just put this chat box on so I can see just in case anyone's chatting here. Ah, yes. Oh, what's the fondant for? Okay, good question, Ebony. Ebony's asking what's the fondant for um, on the recipe sheet. That is if you want to do chocolate eclairs, which I will show you how to type. But I haven't got any fondants here in the house, and possibly, I'd imagine probably you haven't got any fondants. So I'll show you a way around it. But that's what that's for. 
So I'm just going to flatten that out and turn the stove up. And what I want to do is cook the starch out of here. Now this is important as well. If you don't cook the starch out, when you break these open, they'll be quite doughy inside. Just check in the chat. Hello, Bill Crompton from college. Lovely to see you on today. Oh, we all know Bill, don't we? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just cooking that out now. Just turn that up slightly. And this is going to take about two minutes to cook out. You can have the heat on quite high. Now, lots of people say you, you've got to wait for it to leave the side of the pan. I've never seen shoe paper leave the side of the pan yet. So all I do is just every 30 seconds give it a stir. Now you can start to see on the bottom of the pan, the starch coming out on that. I'm sure you can see that there. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. We want, we want to get rid of that starch. So just flatten it down again in the pan. Okay, cook that again. I'm going to give it a turn over. I need to keep uh, <laughs> trying. We've got lots coming on today, which is fabulous. You're f oh, I'm frozen, am I? Oh, it looks all right here, Michelle. Not quite sure. Probably the internet connection, not the best. But I do, re I do uh, record these and put them up on YouTube. I did forget to do the quiche one the other day. It's live on Facebook, but I forgot to record it for um, YouTube. <laughs> okay, so that is very, very nearly there now. Now, you might not be able to see that, but on the bottom of that pan, it's not burnt. If I try and scratch that there, it's a starch, and that's perfect. So, pop that out into your bowl, and that's the pan there, okay? Just put that in some water, and leave that 10 minutes. Don't try scrubbing it. Oh, here's the chocolate hoover is out already. Hello, Rolo. You can say hello to everybody. And just spread that up the side of the bowl. Okay, just take some of the heat out of it. It's going to take a minute. <clears throat> then we're going to have three eggs, approximately three eggs. Now these eggs I've got here aren't the biggest of eggs, so it might take a bit more. Yours might take a bit less if you've got some large eggs. I'm just, uh, just checking the chat as we go, making sure anyone's asking me questions. Okay, so we're going to crack the eggs. Very low. You can see the big brown nose poking up there. Okay, into that. And I'm just going to blend those together. Now you can do this bit by machine, but when I'm teaching the students at college to do this, I always do it by hand to start with because it's far easier to get the feel for it in the bowl. If you get this wrong, you're going to throw it all the way, so that's how we learn it this way. If you're used to machine pastry, you can do this bit on the machine, but it doesn't take long. And it's a good workout because we need the exercise, don't we? So don't add too much of this egg. Just start with a little bit, okay, and then blend it together. I've got some boxy towel down there so I don't start banging us from talking. Okay. How are we doing? Another neighbour, hello Leanne, how are you, all right? Bill's saying we're okay, fantastic, I'm glad you can all see me. Okay, so just keep working this. Now, you don't need to go to the gym when you're doing something like this, but I was thinking of doing a few squats at the same time, you know, perhaps you could just do a squat at the same time, so we'll get our exercise in for the day as well. Because by the time you finish this, your arm will be dropping off. If you're not used to mixing. Bit by bit, if you put too much egg in, you'll just be chasing it around the bowl and it's difficult to work with. So just a little bit and a little bit. Okay, now I've already got my oven set and I've got it on 190 degrees. In this recipe I've, I've posted, it says cooking for, what does it say? 15 to 20 minutes. My oven at home, I did it just before, they took 25 minutes to do. Okay, so you might just want to change that. Keep adding. So remember, the first important point we're making is not to let the water boil away. The second and most important point is adding the eggs. Okay, if you add too much egg, they're not going to work, they're going to be like pancakes. If you don't add enough egg, they're not going to work, they're going to be like bricks. So there's a very fine line. And when you're doing patisserie work, it is about a science. 
but this you actually have to use your eye. So I couldn't really give you a weight. It's approximately three eggs. Those this morning I did just took over three eggs. Okay, so it depends on the flour you're using. Depends on if you've weighed your water out properly. Now, back to the water. I never put mine in the measuring jug and use the scales here. I always weigh the water. It's far more accurate because my, my line might not be quite straight. And obviously, making such a small amount needs to make sure that it's accurate. So, always weigh your water. 175 mils. Keep going. Just check. <laughs> Thank you, Linda, for work. Well done and <laughs> your good work. Thank you very much. Do you know what? I'm actually getting into these now. I get up in the morning, do a bit of prep, and then uh, so I think I'll get used to this. I might speak to the boss and see if I can, can do this more often from home, you know, in the comfort of our own homes. And then, when I was standing here talking, I couldn't decide what to make for Friday's lesson. And I've got loads and loads of apples in the fridge, so I thought I'd make tart at ham. But I've got no puff pastry, so I've started to make some puff pastry. So when I finish this lesson, I'm going to go back to my puff pastry and give it a turn. So I might show you puff pastry as well on Friday. So you, could, you don't have to use puff pastry. Classically it is, you could use a sweet pastry. So I'm going to show you tart at ham on Friday. And um, what else can we do with apples? Apple charlotte, I think I'll do if I can find some bread, which is really nice, so really easy. Okay, so we've nearly got the three eggs in there now. Any questions so far? Oh, it keeps saying group broadcast interrupted. I'll tell you what I might just do. Let me just open the door, just to the signal. <coughs> I don't know if that's any better. It might be the internet's not very strong today, which is a shame. But we are recording, so don't panic. It'll be on YouTube if it's stopping and starting. Okay, that's all three eggs in there now. Now it's, it's starting to get softer. It's very hard to see this really, but it's still a tiny bit. So I tend to watch it fold over it's a tiny bit thick okay so i'm going to add a fraction more egg got some here from this morning <clears throat> okay so from this you can make eclairs as well and that's what the fondant's for eclairs if i was making eclairs especially nowadays it's very trendy eclairs you see They've got lovely patterns on the top of them and gold leaf and everything. You would keep the shoe pastry very slightly stiffer so it holds its shape in the oven. With bitter rolls, you want a bit more air in it, so you put a little bit more egg in it, that's all. Okay. And I will show you how to pipe an eclair, just in case somebody wants to do eclairs. There's also a, a dessert called Paris Breast which is a lovely dessert, really nice. And it was invented over a hundred years ago, obviously French, and it was a cycle race that went to, from Paris to Brest. Um, I think it was a hundred miles, I think it is. Anyway, so they had to make a dessert that resembled a bicycle wheel. So hence how Paris Brest became popular. It's literally shoe pastry, piped in a ring, flaked almonds on top and baked in the oven. So there's loads of things you can do with shoe pastry. When it comes out of the oven, you just, nearly there, nearly there, you just put some praline cream inside and that's powder. So that's another one. You can also poach this, not my cup of tea really. Um, you can also fry it into a beignet from this, into a fryer. It's a little bit like a donut, they're gorgeous. Okay, that is ready. So let me see if I can show you. It's a little bit softer but it's still holding its shape, okay? So it's still a little bit peaky, as you can see. All right, so that's what we want. That's probably the most important thing to get right. Move these bits out of the way. And then we've got a tray here. Now, just very, very lightly grease it. Don't put too much grease on this tray, because it's gonna slide and it's gonna burn. So I've just used some butter, and then, 
Get yourself a pipe in the back. And I'll do it. The muffle, just use the bag itself. It just needs better shape, so just slip off the bottom here and then put yourself a flat. I always tend to use a plain nozzle, okay? And there. Pop that down. And just have it, but I tend to stress the bag and then push that in. So if you're using like a softer mix of cream, it stops it falling out the bottom. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Back on again. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the internet, but as I say, it is recorded. So now, you notice how I fold over the bag? It's far easier holding my hands, and then I'm going to put that in there. Okay, do it. So, that's the way. Now, piping. It is a skill, but you need to get the right, the right way. So push it all down and then twist the bag. Get the pressure by the twist in the bag. Okay, now I'm left handed, so I'm literally going to put it in my hand and that's where my pressure comes from there. Obviously, if you're right handed, you're going the other way around. Your other hand is a pure guide. I'm not squeezing from the middle and it's popping out the top. So keeping the pressure as you go, you can see I'm twisting there. Then you're going to pipe directly above the shoe pastry. So it's probably about a centimetre from the tray and you're going to squeeze, stop squeezing and flick off. Okay, squeeze, stop squeezing and flick off. Now, what people try and do is try and pipe them round like this. And you don't want to go round. Notice how my bag, I'm going to sweep it up again. Just directly above, stop squeezing and then flick off. Okay, and we're just going to fill the tray up really quickly. And if you're not brilliant at getting the size right, you can also count. So you might do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that way you're going to get the pressure on exactly the same size. Don't worry if they're not perfect. It's your first time. Oh, I'm going to show you an eclair as well. Let me get to the end of these and then I'll show you an eclair. So if you want to do some eclairs, I would recommend doing them on a separate tray really because they do... They do cook separately, but I'm just going to show you. So literally, I would normally use a slightly wider nozzle, put the nozzle on the tray there, and then just squeeze, okay, and take it back and to whatever size you want to go. So we're going to go for quite a bit more. So about there. Stop squeezing and flick it back over. Again, if you're not very good at piping, you could actually mark, because I can see on the back, you could mark lines like that and use the lines. I'm just going to quickly put those on there. Now, I'm going to show you how to make pastry cream. Lots of people fill these with whipped cream. Now, I have not got any whipped cream in the house. I have to do this. If you're an absolute perfectionist and you were doing, say, a croque and bouche, which I have done, I've done there, uh, I believe it was um, wedding cake I've done. Forms and chocolates, I did their granddaughter's wedding cake. It was a huge, oh, it's about eight foot croque and bouche. It took me about 24 hours to make non-stop. Uh, so we have thousands of these. So you want them all perfect. So you can, I'm just literally touching tap of water on there and just getting rid of those peaks. But it's not the end of the world. And that's it. So into the oven for 24 minutes. Okay. Right, so pastry cream. Let me just wipe it down. Let me see. Here's my little tray, got them set up already. So, I do like pastry cream. And if you, you will all have tasted pastry cream, you get it in fruit tartlets, you'll get it in vanilla slices. Um, oh, hi, Brent from America, you're, you're up early. Nice to see you on here. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> really nice to see you. Okay. So I've got 250 grams of milk in here. You have got the recipe, it's already on there. And then I haven't got, well I have, I've got a vanilla pot here, but it's so old, it's too hard. But what you can do with these is put them in sugar, in my bag of sugar, 
or a tin of sugar. I actually used to put them in a bag of sugar, but the problem is it actually absorbs and it comes out into your cupboard, so it's better in a glass jar or tin or something. So just put a vanilla pod and then you've got a load of vanilla sugar already done, because these now, they've gone up in price dramatically, they were something like three pounds each, that's a lot of money. So I'm not gonna use that, I'm gonna put that into my sugar. I've just got a little tiny bit of uh, vanilla paste here. I think I got this from Tesco's. So I'm just gonna put a touch of it in there. It's actually got the seeds in already. So I don't know if you know much about vanilla pods, but if you split them down the center, they're full of seeds and you'd use those and this outside house when you put that in the milk. Okay, so put that on there. I'm just bringing that milk up to the boil. And then I've got um, one egg and 50 grams of sugar. So put that together. Get my little uh, whisk, what is it for me? And whisk those together. Keep them up, nearly there. Okay. Then, I've got in there, I've got 25 grams of flour and five grams of custard powder. Now be careful with this because this is your setting agent, so what's going to make it thick? So you want to make sure that you haven't left some in the bottom of the bowl, which people tend to do. You can see some in the bottom of that bowl there. Because it won't, it won't go thick otherwise. So make sure, five grams isn't a lot, so it needs to make sure it goes in there. Push that through. Then, I'm just get the spoon out. Mix that together. And bring that to a paste. Normally I'd use a bit bigger bowl than this actually. Just watching that milk, take that milk off. So, do you remember on um, Monday, when we've got hot liquid and we've got eggs, we always add the hot into the egg, into the cold, hot into the cold. If I was just to pour this mix straight into the hot milk, I'd end up with scrambled egg, which I don't want. So once I've brought that to a nice smooth paste, I'm going to pour some of this milk on. You can just see me there, yeah, good. Just a little bit to start with. Blend that together. Are we okay down there, Rolo, are we? I'm not dropping much today, am I? No. Not your favourite class today, is it? Your chocolate's your favourite one. Let's see. Hi Sue, Michelle. Oh yeah, Rolo does want some. Can you see him down there looking up? Okay, so that's all in. Put that back onto the heat, and then you're going to bring that to the to the boil. It doesn't take long if that pan's nice and hot. Let me just turn that back on again. Now, all we're doing is bringing it back to the boil. This is where you start to panic because you'll start to see lumps appear in your pastry cream. Don't panic. All that's happening is it's just setting on the bottom, starting to thicken. So just keep stirring, keep stirring, and eventually the whole lot will thicken. I'll show you when it starts to get a little bit lumpy and a bit scrambled eggy. If I had lots of fruit in the house, you could use um, lemon zest or orange zest or anything and just put the zest in there, it's really nice. It looks like my live is freezing again, I can see it freezing. Okay, let's tweak that up. Right, starting to look like a big like lump of scrambled egg. Let me show you. Can you see in there it's looking lumpy, it's not looking very good. That's perfect, that's what it will look like. So take it back to the heat, keep going. So another 30 seconds a minute. Oops, and then those lumps will just disappear to a nice smooth pastry cream. Because we've got flour in there, remember we want to cook out the starch again. So we're just giving it that extra second on there. That is ready to roll. Okay, turn that off. 
So what we're going to do with that now is put that into a bowl so it's nice and smooth there now. Put that into a bowl because it's a bit hot to go into fish rolls at the moment. If I have some cream, what my absolute favourite is, I let this go cold, so I always cling film it. Now, when I cling film, I put it into another bowl, and I don't put the cling film across it, I put the cling film on the pastry cream. If you put it across, the pastry cream gets a big skin on it, and you don't want that, so put the cling film down to the pastry cream. Put it in the fridge for an hour, and once it's cold, just beat it back with your hand and whip up some cream. So I normally do 100 mils of cream, semi-whipped up, part whipped up and then fold that through and it makes a really nice rich pastry cream there. Once that's done, we would then put it into our piping bags, let me move these out of the way, and then we would literally get these here, some I prepared earlier, so you don't have to wait 25 minutes, you probably can't see my oven but it's starting to move in the oven now, um, and then all we do is turn these over Put your finger in the bottom and get your piping bag and pipe the pastry cream through the bottom. Or your fresh cream, if you've got whipped cream and you've been out or you've got a, an order coming, get some whipped cream, it's lovely. Me personally, I don't like to put sugar in my whipped cream, it's too sweet for me. So I would always do just plain cream in there, but some people do crème chanté. So into there, I would always do three on the bottom. And you know, if you like me and you do like them, you might find a little cute one to go on top there. And then chocolate sauce, okay. Now, I've never made chocolate sauce all this morning without cream, because I always use cream. So normally, the recipe, I think I put the recipe on there, haven't I? Yeah, so there's 100 of dark chocolate. The chocolate that we used last time, the calibre, so any dark chocolates. I've used 100 grams of that and 125 double cream. So all I'll do is boil the cream up, take it off the heat, and then add the chocolate buttons. That's it. That's a really expensive but really nice way of making chocolate sauce. If you don't want to do that and it's a bit expensive, you could boil your milk up, thicken it with corn flour, and add some cocoa powder and do it that way, a little bit of sugar. And um, that's a cheaper way of doing it. Then once that's done, literally I'm just going to show you. Now I know mine have got no pastry cream in yet because mine just melting this back down. I'm quite impressed with this actually, I've just made it with milk. So because I use milk, I can use less because cream's a lot fat, it's got fat in it, so it's fatter. So in this pan here, all I've done is boiled up 50 mils, hello Rona, 50 mils of milk took it off the heat and then i've just added a hundred and it's given me quite a nice texture i'll just put it over here so you can see it does actually flow quite nicely can you see i would then just dust that with some icing sugar and that is your fish rolls made now this is a shout out to my neighbor mark who hasn't been well next door uh, next door this is his favorite so rachel get making these and lots of chocolate sauce on and um that's it for today. As I say, on Friday, we will be making tartar tam. I have a puff pastry here. I need to give that another roll in a minute, so we'll be doing that. Um, I'm going to show you how to make puff pastry as well, because I know some of you have asked me about puff pastry. So I'm on my third turn at the moment, but I'll explain all that. So any questions before we go? No? Brilliant. Let me just check my thing, Greg. How can we reuse piping bags? Oh, good question. Okay. So all you would do, Where's my piping bag? Is wash it out, just finish that off, wash it out, and dry it. Open this up and dry them. And we do do that at college sometimes, we just dry them above some wall. Once they're dry, then you can reuse them again. But they are disposable piping bags, so they are meant to be thrown away in the industry. But yeah, if you're short of piping bags, save them and do that. So I think that's it for everybody. Any more questions? Yeah, well, thank you very much for joining me today, and I will see you all on Friday. Bye, everybody. <clears throat> Bye.